Welcome to my thoughts on True Lies Season 1, Episode 9. This episode is called Bitter Sweetheart. So, as usual, spoilers for these first nine episodes. This is another episode that I absolutely loved. So, let us get right into it. And let's see. So, so yeah, first we have, you know, they don't have sex in the evening because... Harry was kicked in the dice. They don't have sex in the morning. You know, this kind of felt like this was the, the episode where they just went Taxi 1, the, the movie. Just, wow. And <laughs> Luther manages to blurt out the, the reason that, you know, Ava and Gib are no longer together right in front of Ava. And let's see, and and we have the the typical thing of the guy just wants to be able to explain himself. The woman won't give. Just I realize that is a dynamic that exists in a number of real life relationships. I don't know that I really think we need to keep doing it in fiction. Let's see, and the coffee is dropped and like everyone is bickering until Rex enters the room and like you know it's it's parallel bickering the the two you know Maria and Luther are bickering about the coffee about whose fault it is and Harry and Helen are bickering about you know the yeah how it's affecting the relationship kind of just, yeah and we learned that several ex-spies have been killed, and I gotta say, I immediately called this being the Commando episode, which, like, yeah. I mean, that's a fun movie, so I don't really mind that they're they're taking some some hints from from that one. But yeah, you know, the they had changed. Uh, um, Changed names as they left this unit. Okay, so in Commando, they're not spies; they're like military. But anyway, you know, change names and and live apart, and and some of them don't necessarily live particularly pleasant lives. You know, some of them are killed. It turns out one of the people in on it used to work with the unit and faked his own death, and he's fought off by at least one of the people from his unit the actor's name is Arnold you know it's it's uh, yeah and yeah so we were told about Arnie and then we meet him and it is indeed Tom Arnold and like you know the movie and this episode so far are some of the only things where I don't find Tom Arnold like just impossible to watch like he's not in very much of the the what's it called again he's in one of the wow he's been in a lot of the recent stuff anyway he's he's in one of the the um nightmare on elm street movies he's not in it very much but he's still utterly terrible in it oh right McHale's navy yikes he's he's terrible in what was the other one? I, I, I think it's called Bully with... It's like him and the the, um, the father from the, the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movies. Just, yeah. But here and in the True Lies movie, which, you know, overall I have a lot of problems with that one, but Tom Arnold is, is on point in it. And yeah, we, we learn, you know, there's the thing about, it's, um, you know, if you're out of sync, that can really destroy the, the unit. And so Maria and Luther worry that that's happening to them. And, <laughs> you know, Gib says, and of course, Helen hears and starts to wonder, you know, mixing Omega and love means you're doomed, you know. And they, they bring back the, the Ice Cube tray line, but instead of the B word, they have him say 
which because that's the yeah the age rating of this one and you know the moment that he started saying you know one day I showed up and you know like immediately we're, we're calling I'm, I'm not saying I'm the only one we're calling it okay yeah it's it's the ice cube line because you know that was and it is it is you know like I can understand why, why people really like that and you know as soon as he's fixed it we get the counter of Helen asking did she buy it you know was it technically hers you know did was she right to take it kind of you know so that was yeah let's see and yeah and and then Arnie says oh no the, the absolute worst is if you are with someone at Omega and then you break up and you still both work there kind of just and Gib of course here's that one Let's see yeah and and Luther you know Luther and Maria discuss about you know Maria thinks that they're out of sync because Luther is now with Quinn meanwhile you know Luther brings up interesting that you happen to get a dog right when I started dating Quinn and she's like okay Kevlar is an excellent canine unit you know just yeah that was yeah and I really like the the thing with you know they're Harry and Helen are like talking about you know oh we definitely can't end up like like Arnie and, you know and I was like I'm standing right here and I just wish they would go like yeah that's you were meant to hear that kind of thing and yeah uh, Arnie does not get along well with Sharon at least at first and you know there's the thing about underwear which is also very gender stereotypical you know I do appreciate that at least you know they they they're gunning for both gender but uh, of the gender binary you know they're not only taking swipes at, at women you know the, the thing about getting a dog to, to get over a a breakup kind of thing you know but yeah he didn't want to change his underwear and and you know apparently now he doesn't at all wear underwear and just yeah and I like the you know Gib says I'm out of the van I never want to be out of the van and, and Arnie's like I love being out of the van because that was also you know there's a, that thing from the end of the movie where he's like, next time I'm, you know, ne next time you, you'll be in the van. I'm always in the van. I hate being in the van. Something like that. And Helen goes to debrief Sharon because as Arnie just informed us, he's not wearing underwear. No need to debrief him. And Sharon put a live grenade in the shower. And, you know, Arnie goes on to say, I still remember the way she laughed when she pushed me down the elevator shaft. Seriously, that is, like, right out of the, the just, yeah. Like, if, if Weird Al decides to do another verse, I think he should include Live Grenade in the shower. And... Let's yeah we we you know they talk about oh the you know he was killed on a houseboat where's all the you know file cabinets that are full you know so yeah okay it wasn't it and and even in commando 2 it was a, a it wasn't a houseboat but it was a boat that was blown up and yeah and we're told about crypsis which we get a little more information on and <laughs> We get the joke about, you know, the, the old, even old spies don't know, pinch and zoom, you know, the, it's, a, it's a joke about boomers, you know, that they're, like, they're holding the screen close and they're like, mm, is that, I can't quite, you know, and, and then Harry goes up and just does the pinch and zoom, oh, you know, because they're, they're so old that, yeah, back when they were spies, pinch and zoom wasn't a thing yet, so, it's, yeah. And a lot of jokes about Nads this episode. I did not see that coming. And 
and yeah, the the <laughs> Helen points out we're gonna need a boy van and a girl van because the, the you know some of the boys and girls are really not getting along right now, and you know Arnie is talking about that was my gun she saved my gun and she gave back my gun you know and then it goes and and he's like saying it's so meaningful and then it goes to Sharon oh, he's gonna think it's so meaningful you know that was that was kind of funny and that was also very. <laughs> Very, very gender stereotypical, but yeah. And yeah, we see Lance is not dead, or, or we realize Lance is probably not dead. And we see the conspiracy walls and armed units approaching, and Lance feels he was left to die. I appreciate, like, Lance, there weren't really any jokes with him in this episode like so they're they're kind of some sometimes the the villains on the show have jokes like there was the thing about portrait mode versus land not landscape yeah i think you know what i mean you know the there was that joke with that other guy and yeah there's been some jokes with some of them but some of them are just you know yeah lance is just kind of a badass and he's like, everybody betray me. And yeah, and, and Lance is now working with Crypsis. And yeah, they're gonna use the smoke as a cover, and they they win because they work as a team. And <clears throat> I like the thing with, you know, I hate you, I hate you so much, I hate that I love you, and then they kiss, just, yeah. And, which, you know, it does have a chance to, to help, like, normalize toxic relationships, so not a, not a fan of that. And Gib texts, you know, Ava, and... That was that was a nice moment, and and I like the thing with you know. Okay, we're gonna count to three. Okay, but do we go on three or go? Wow, but you know they they go for it, and they are indeed still in sync. It was just like they were a little worried there, but they yeah. And Sharon and Arnie shoot the explosives, and. We learn later they faked their deaths. And, yeah, so we learn that, you know, this was not the entirety of Crypsis. So I guess they are setting up a recurring villain, a sort of specter. And what was the one from the... Yeah, Carr was, was the villain from the... Um, K-A-R-R, -R, from, from Knight Rider, you know, so, yeah. Let's see. You know, the, the movie didn't have, you know, they just fought, you know, whatever terrorists were, you know, yeah, they spend the entire movie fighting the same overall terrorists, but that's, you know, but the it, it does make sense for a, a series. And, yeah. Um, Helen points out that wherever Sharon and Arnie are, they're probably having sex now. This was a very randy episode. Like, <laughs> I hope whoever wrote this, this episode was written by, let's see. Yancey Wang and Adam Justy Hardy, one of the Hardy boys, which, yeah, I, I see that. Um, and there's a, yeah, there's also some staff writers credited, Chris Krimwelge and Minoti Vaishnav. I just hope that they were able to get some release after writing this because, yeah, and. Quinn brought coffee for, for Luther, so Luther claims that he was handing coffee to Maria so that she could give it to someone else. And they do a joke about, like, apparently Kevlar drinks coffee, which, like, 
please do not give your dog coffee. I've I've heard that like that is absolutely not like coffee and chocolate and stuff like that. Just no, do not let the the dog eat that. That's not good for it at all. And yeah, you know, Gib and Ava talk, and she says she'll think about giving them another chance, and you know. Of course, makes a, a joke that you know my. What was it my my bot will message your bot, you know, he's not completely off the hook, and yeah, as the episode ends, Helen and Harry do have sex. I thought they were gonna do a joke about like, oh, the kids are home early, so now they can't have sex or something like that, but just yeah, um. I like the I, I love the episode yet again and the just yeah I I feel like they're doing they're can they continue to do a good job of the things that really make the the show work and yeah that is it for this one um, right I will just say I hope that Quinn and Luther stay together I hope that. Ava does get back together with with Gib. I completely understand if she doesn't want to, but yeah, I just, they, they're really sweet together. And uh, yeah, I I hope that at some point Jake will have some point. He, he wasn't even in this episode. Dana was barely in it either. But yeah, I I feel like the fact that Jake is in the show at all, like someone did some some. Uh, what, what do they call it again? Testing? Uh, yeah, they they you know they they found out that apparently some families like for there to be you know two kids, one you know one girl, one boy, because so far he has had no point whatsoever. Now, yeah, that is it for this episode. So. There will be a couple more videos this week. Hope to catch you in one of them. Bye.